Welcome to another episode of 30 Minutes with DailyStraits.com. I am your host, June Robley. Our guest today is Peter Petrullis, a seasoned restauranter with over 25 years of experience in the hospitality industry. He was previously the owner of GPO Brands Table of Restaurants located at One Martin Place, Sydney. During his tenure, Peter oversaw the operations of several successful dining establishments that became popular hotspots in the city's food, food scene. After leave, leaving GPO Grand, Peter recently founded Whis Butler, a unique digital restaurant booking system that helps restaurant owners streamline their operations and enhance their customers' experiences. With his extensive knowledge of the industry, Peter has been able to develop innovative solutions that has revolutionized the way restaurants operate. Uh, my chat with Peter today is going to be around his uh, new venture and more on uh, restaurant booking. So without further ado, let's invite Peter to the show. Hi, Peter. How are you? Good. Thanks, Adrian. Greatly appreciate uh, to be on the show. Thank you so much for that. So let's dive right straight into the questions. So, okay. Um, so you're a restaurant guy and then you quit your job and then you decided to do something on the tech. Uh, spectrum, but with your own experience. So exactly like, tell us in uh, not too many words, what inspired you to start with Butler? It's an understanding of the problems that all restaurants faced that um, tried to take care of their dining customers. And for 20 years, researchers and, uh, and other platforms have tried to solve those problems and they had it. So then I thought I'd um, put my foot in it as well and see if I could solve those problems. Um, and those problems really stem from booking systems from a customer perspective. They look amazing because you can go there, say, can I have a table, say it's 7.30, it's down on Saturday night, and you either get the booking or you don't get the booking. And they look amazing. But from a restaurant perspective, they're actually very clumsy and require a lot of manual intervention behind the scenes. So they're not really helping the restaurant. Just to give a couple of examples why I say they're clumsy, is firstly, they're not customer centric. So therefore, when you ask for a table at 7.30, the system doesn't know who you are. You could be a regular person, you always like to sit on table 10. So if you call somebody and talk to them, they will know that, that you, and you will have the comfort, they will put you on your favorite table. But when you go on a, the, on a system, the system doesn't know who you are. So therefore, it can allocate you anywhere. Um, so therefore, you don't have an incentive to actually use the system, um, you'd still potentially prefer to call. Mm -hmm. uh, also, when the system does the allocation, that every time a booking comes in, it allocates it. And then the next one comes in and it allocates it. Mm -hmm. So in effect, the allocation process is not optimised mm -hmm. and behind the scenes, again, each day the restaurant staff would have to go in look at where the bookings have been placed by the system and rearrange them manually. So it becomes a huge manual process, uh, but it's not customer centric. And as I said, other people have tried to solve it. Um, and then I sort of put my head in the ring and uh, tried to, to solve it myself. So what is yours? How is yours different from the other? The other systems require a restaurant to add in all its tables and then which tables can be pushed together or joined together to make a bigger table, which they call table combinations. So every other system requires the restaurant to input tables and table combinations. So when a person requests a booking, then the search the algorithm looks to find an appropriate table or table combination to put them on, um, which sounds very simple and it sounds correct, but it's actually incorrect because what a restaurant actually needs to manage is its space, not its tables or table combination, because the space determines what you can do with those tables. So you need to be able to manage the space as the first thing. And I, again, just to give a, a silly example, but a, a very relative one, if you have five tables of two and you're required to have sp spaces or gaps in between the five tables of two, with privacy, but then when you get a booking for 10, you push them together. So once you push them together, all the gaps that were between the tables and now at the end. If they're at the end, well, why can't the restaurant put in to bring in an extra table and then they can actually increase their revenue because they've got an extra table. So you can see space is what defines 
you know, optimizing a restaurant's revenue, not tables and table combinations. So if somebody gets the app, they download the app, uh, is it on the App Store and the Android? It's not on the App Store, it's a web app. Mm -hmm. uh, so they would need to log in. Uh, but it's a lot easier than being an app because by being a web app, any updates we make, they automatically get um, on their system instantaneously without needing to down download it. So for, for, for a commercial enterprise, um, I suggest it's better to be a web app than a, a native app from the uh, App Store. So how, okay, so um, so how do they actually, like with the current headwinds that the restaurants are facing, how can they increase their revenue with your app? So, okay, say like I go to the, on the, on the internet, I log on to Wiz Butler, I put in my details, I say I want to go to this Italian restaurant in Lycar, yep. okay, at uh, 7.30 on NZAC day. <laughs> Okay, it's going to be a pretty uh, busy day on that day. So, and then what happens next? So, on the back end with the restaurants, how do they get the booking and they allocate the table for me? Well, the, the, the first thing we do is with the restaurant, we need to get it, um, the dimensions of the restaurant. You know, its length, its width, where the bar is, where the front door is, where the, where the, where the exit is, where the toilets are, uh, if there's any columns in between. Uh, so we know the full size of the space. Then we, we need the measurements of all the tables um, and the chairs. Um, and if the different size tables, round tables, um, whatever they are. Um, so then with our algorithm, it'll go through. And if a booking request comes in uh, from yourself, then um, it'll go through and it'll try, it'll try to place the table in the most efficient space within, within the space. Um, so it's not looking for a table or table combination. It'll actually place the table inside inside the space. Um, the, and then by doing that, it will then actually draw what it's actually done on the screen. So when the restaurant staff walk in, they can see where the table has been placed on their floor plan so they can set up the service. Um, the second and very important thing our system does is it does not make these permanent allocations each time because if you make a permanent allocation, you don't know what the next booking request you will receive or the next or the next or the next because you, all the booking requests don't come in at the same time. So because they don't come in and you don't know what the next one is, then what we do, every time we, we, the system receives a booking request, it actually unseats all the previous bookings um, that have been received, adds it together with the last booking request, then it knows everybody, and because it's starting afresh, it can actually see, in your case, June, your booking, they can see from their database and their CRM system that you're a regular, that you like sitting on table number one, uh, your party size will fit on table number one, that will put you on table number one. Um, so it does two things in that process. First, it manages space, Secondly, it dynamically reallocates each and every booking as when the last booking is received. So at any point in time, then the system has done the allocation with full knowledge. Mm, interesting. So uh, so does, does this mean that you partner with the restaurants? Because yes. you, oh, okay. So you're, this is not a consumer app. It's an app more for the restaurants, right? Correct. But the consumer gets the benefit because after we partner with the restaurant and they put our widget on their website, so you go to their website and make a booking, um, you get those benefits as a consumer because now you know that the restaurant will sit you on your favourite table. You know um, that there will be no surprise. So there's no need for you to actually call to get that personalised service. Wow, interesting. So what about restaurants where they have tables that are, you know, glued to the floor? Some of the restaurants, you know, the old restaurants, like those Italian restaurants, right? The furnitures are pretty much set. So can you partner with those guys or do you, uh, how do you work with those kind of uh, restaurants? Well, there, there's, there's a couple of things there. Um, and I think this is where restaurants need to think about the future rather than the past. And, you know, some of the, the, the headwinds that we all know about is inflation is increasing um, and inflation is across the board. So it's not isolated to one item. So it impacts your, uh, your fish price, your meat price, your veggie price, your gas, your electricity. Um, every single cost is there. So you, you then look at it and say, well, I've got to put my prices up. 
But if your pro if your customers are going through the same thing, then uh, you know all of their uh, their rent or their mortgage is going up. Their food foodstuffs is going up. The cost of clothing, so they have less money to spend. So you, restaurants can't just keep pushing the price up. So they've got to find ways of doing things better. And in doing things better, which is, I guess, where we're coming from from a revenue perspective, is you can turn around and start looking at your furniture. So even if you have furniture that doesn't move, um, you may have a private booth and everybody wants to sit that on that private booth. You know, you may have another table that's right next to the toilet and, you know, that's not a favourite table. So in trying to manage the, the restaurant, you do what hotels do. And what happens to a hotel? If you want to go to a hotel that's got a beautiful view over the harbour, then you will pay more for that room than if it's a room that's actually facing the back of the hotel, which is the laneway. So now restaurants can turn around and say, okay, if you want my private booth, or if you want my table, which has got a beautiful view, well, maybe I can charge you an extra 10%. Or maybe I can charge you an extra $10 per person, which people who want that will pay for it. And then the person who just wants the quality of the food and is not too care, is not too fussed about the occasion uh, because it's not a special occasion, maybe they're happy to take the table that's sort of next to the, uh, the kitchen, um, in which case they can get a discount. So now that, that process of being able to differentiate your product within a restaurant is called yield management. And now, if you do that yield management, you can now start doing what airlines do, what hotels do, what many other industries do, which takes the restaurant into a different playing field because now they can actually enhance and generate more revenue than what they could have otherwise. Okay, awesome. So, okay, tell me how many restaurants have you partnered with? At the moment, we were sort of focusing on building our system. Um, which we've done and uh, the, we're there with um, quite a number of restaurants as we've built the system. Um, we're only going now through that scale-up process. Um, and I guess what we've also done, we, we, because we were building quite a large system, it starts with the booking system. And then because you can automate the booking system, you can then look at automating the entire restaurant process. So by automating the, the whole restaurant process, I mean, you've just made a booking, you know, you, you're comfortable that you've been put on your favourite table or the restaurant's allowed you to select your favourite table. You can plan your occasion because you can say, you know, I'd like a nice bucket with some champagne on it because it happens to be my anniversary uh, or my special birthday. Uh, you can do that. Then the, the restaurant sends you a confirmation email. Um, once you get your confirmation email through our system, um, which is all restaurant branded, it's not the Wiz Butler branded, um, then you have the ability to invite your guests. And when you invite your guests, then, you know, you can pay for everybody or they can order themselves. So now you have the ability to pre-order before you even get to the restaurant. Okay, but how many businesses have you partnered with so far? So far, we've partnered with 20 um, and we're currently onboarding another 10. Um, and it's the start of our scale-up process and with the the, the new um, businesses that are coming on board um, they're not only taking our booking system they're also taking the ordering system and our point of system um, so what we've done with all of those systems is i've created what i call a blended system because it's not a matter of an integration where one system asks for some information and the other system gives it to it and it's all sort of not 100% automated because it requires manual intervention. Uh, once it begins, and that's why I guess I call it a blended system because you can order through your uh, booking system. You, know, you can make it a reservation through the ordering system. So it's all quite blended and quite fluid. Awesome. So uh, did you do a pilot project with any of the restaurants before you went all in? Like, like oh. compare, you know, before and after the revenue with this yes. partner? So how much yes. is the increase in revenue, like 100%? What we find um, and a, on a busy service, because if it's a quiet service and you only have one booking and one person, well, any system does that and uh, there's nothing you can maximise. But if you talk about a busy service on a Friday night, just through 
the increased capacity because we're managing space and we're managing space dynamically, uh, they can easily achieve 50% more revenue because they get they can easily achieve 50% more bookings. Okay, so basically, um, what is the, um, okay, now, for now, challenging times, a lot of people are not spending money on dining, blah, blah, blah. So how does that uh, work with the Wisp Butler system? Are you, um, you know, helping with the restaurants uh, in any way or, or, or manner? To if you, again, go back to the booking system, our booking system completely automates the reservation process. So therefore, there's no need for a restaurant uh, to have any reservation staff. So with the reservation staff, they can get them to focus on the floor to do things and be more customer centric and uh, more on customer service rather than actually taking the call. Or alternatively, during uh, a service, um, when the staff are actually busy running around taking care of customers, there's no need to answer the telephone um, because the system will do that. And, uh, we've got a number of restaurants who use our system who actually do not give out a telephone number for people to call up to make a reservation because there's no need to. Mm, awesome. So what is the what is it in for Wispat does like basically how do you make money out of this app? You obviously don't charge the customer, it's free for the customer. But what is the, the revenue share with the restaurant? So how do you work with well, that? We're very simple. Um it's basically $99 per month as a subscription fee. And then we charge a very small five cents per customer um, that they take care of in the restaurant. So even if they're selling a cup of coffee at four dollars, and they you know they share five cents with us, it's still affordable. Um, let alone if you're talking about a restaurant where it's a hundred dollars per head um, as an average spend that they have, them paying us five cents per customer to manage their reservations and to manage their space and to provide them with dynamic floor plans, I think is a very worthwhile investment on their behalf. So who goes in to the restaurant and take the measurement of the tables and the space? Does the restaurant give you all that? Because it's a bit of a cumbersome thing to do all this, the restaurant, you know, the table to, to actually do all that. Do, they, do you face resistance with the restaurants when you mention all this to them? Actually, we don't. Uh, <laughs> most restaurants would have gone through a council approval process. So they actually have a floor plan to scale. So all they need to do is they, uh, send that to us um and then we just load it into the system and uh, they're up and running very quickly um so it's actually a lot simpler than uh, what it sounds okay so once you get that and then they, they, you get the floor plan you maximize the plan do you actually go to the restaurant and tell them how to rearrange the the furniture and all the space and stuff what, what we do is we put every, load the system in with the floor plan and the dimensions as you say we then have a discussion with them um, and the discussion will potentially take uh, two or three hours where we then build in all, all the rules that they would like in their restaurant because if they don't like to take big bookings in one part of the restaurant, that's fine. If they want to, um, you know, to rearrange tables in a particular way because that's the way they like to operate their restaurant, we're happy with that as well. So what we try, what we do during that process, is we use their knowledge on how they want to operate their restaurant based on their strategy. So we don't tell them um, how they should rearrange the tables. We just need rules of them as to the, the way they like to do things. Then we put those rules into the system, and then after that, they don't have to do anything else. So it's a, a quick, simple process that lasts for a very long time um because it's all automated okay so the two to three hours uh, thing your team goes in for free of charge or is it part of the 99 dollars uh thing it, it's free of charge oh free of charge okay so we do that because then we get their ongoing revenue um and as i said we're happy with five cents uh per customer of that ongoing revenue so how do you see the uh, future of restaurants? Uh, do you see that space management becoming a, few, a part of the big, uh, a part of the business? I think that is the only option. <laughs> uh, um, you know, I know it sounds uh, uh, very confident, but the reason I say that is if you look at 
everything else in life and retail, everything is about how many meters you have and how you manage those meters. And it's all to do with optimization of that space. And now I think as, as hospitality is moving forward, we're getting more automation. And I don't know if you've come across little things like, you know, ro robotic waiters, uh, which bring food to the table and do things like that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, they, they need to be managed based on space. They need to know where the table is. They need to know a path of travel. So if you're going to have flexibility in maximizing your revenue, you've got to have the ability to tell these little robots that you've changed where the table is. So you can only do that with space management. You cannot do that with what all the other systems have, which is tables and table combinations. So these restaurants, the 20 ones that you you have partnered with, are they like modern restaurants? Because the restaurants in our in my area, yes. they're old restaurants and the uh, fittings in the restaurants are very old and it's all, you know, it's glued to the floor. Yes. So do you have tough conversations like, okay, you know what, I think you need to spend X amount to actually, you know, maybe make this uh, movable. <laughs> Furnitures, do you have tough conversations like that? And Look, you're right. Um, with the restaurants uh, we're in at the moment, um, a significant part of their furniture is movable, okay, because that's how you'll, you'll maximise it. Our system still works even if the furniture is not movable because we unseat everybody and reseat everybody every time we get a new booking. So you will always optimise even your fixed furniture. Um, but coincidentally... Of the, the, the restaurants, the 20 restaurants we have, at least 10 of them have actually since changed their tabletops and their furniture since uh, we've put the system in because oh. they've seen the benefits of it um, and they haven't stayed fixed to their old ways. Mm. Okay. So tell me about the uh, business with Butler. So is it just you or do you have a founding, uh, a co-founder? What's the business uh, demographic like and how many people are... Like, where is the tech coming from? Is it all built in New South Wales? I mean, I, I believe you're in Sydney, right? Correct. So we're in Sydney. Um, that's where our head office is. Um, as far as, I guess, the, the core team is concerned, um, there's myself. Um, there's my spouse um, as a co-founder because um, she was working in the business with me as well. Um, and our CTO um, is a third sort of core person in that process. Um then we used to have our full team based in Sydney. Um, now um, it's actually sort of dispersed. Um, we've got a couple of people working in London, um, a couple of people working in the Philippines, and, uh, and uh, also a few people in the Philippines, a few people in Nepal. So we're a team of 20 people at the moment. Um, as we look to, to continue to expand and grow and to, and to scale up because we've created the software, we've tested it over the last three years. So it's not as if it's something that's been created three weeks ago um, and we're just re getting ready to, to scale it up in a significant way. So how long has it been around, like Wiz Butler? The restaurants have been using it for just over three years um, and they've been our test restaurants um, because... We were entering a, a very competitive market space, if I can call it that. Um, we didn't want to get sidetracked side by restaurants sort of telling us, I want this feature or that feature or the other feature. So we didn't want too many restaurants on our platform while we were still building it. Um, that's why it's not an excess amount of restaurants at the moment, um, because we also had very fixed ideas as to what we wanted. Um, we've lodged over 20 patents. Um, we've received our first patent from the USA. Um, the others are still pending. So what we've done here obviously is quite innovative, otherwise we wouldn't have received a patent. Um, so this is fully funded by you and your, your are fully funded by you or do you have external funding? Are you looking for external funding? For scaling, we'll start looking for it. We're now beginning to look for external funding. Up until now, it's sort of been internal, uh, uh, internally funded by myself. So it looks like it doesn't like have any competitors. Am I right to say this? Look, it has. There's a lot of competitors in that restaurant space, but it has zero competitors in space management, um, as far as the booking is concerned. 
and it has zero competitors as far as a completely automated entire restaurant solution. So what's the plan now? So see the web app, are you looking for a phone, uh, making it into a mobile app? Is there a plan to go there? Look, there's no plan to go there because Ooh. our app is really accessed by the restaurant and then it's really just a, a book now button that the customer sees. Oh. Um, so there's no there's no necessity um, to have a a native app um, or mobile app separate to our web app. Okay, so it's the it's the restaurant that does the. I mean, this is more for the restaurant because you've been a, a restaurant for many years, so you know the pain points from how the restaurants. And it, and it was those pain points that I'm addressing, and coincidentally, those pain points um, have been known for years before me, but no one's been able to solve them. So what, how does Wheat Bustler system, um, okay, you've already answered this cost reductions and savings for the restaurants to the office space, but I was just wondering, right, do you face any resistance from the restaurants from signing up to any, anything that they, they might, uh, you know, what, not want to sign up? At the, at the moment, as I said, we, we really haven't gone out to the marketplace. But for the few restaurants we've spoken, it's more, it is new, it is innovative, and they're sort of still in their lane of doing things the way they've always done them. And I think that is a huge disadvantage for them if, if they continue to think that way. And I think that has to change because what happened with the service station? You know, many years ago, you used to go to a service station and you'd pull up and someone, would, you know, would say, how much petrol would you like? And they'd clean your windscreen and they'd pump up your tyres and they'd check your oil and they'll do all of these things. But labour cost is too, too high. So now, if you don't know how to put petrol in your car, well, your car's going to stop and that's it. Um, if you go to a supermarket, what, what happened in the supermarket? You know, you used to have all these checkout queues and people were there and they did all of those things and now you're moving away because labour cost is too high and they're trying to keep the price of the product down. So now it's self-service and you're sort of checking out your own um, groceries in the supermarket. And many other businesses are doing that, so they, they, they're not forced to push up the prices. And restaurants will have to adopt automation because they can't continue pushing up prices because people won't afford it. So the only pushback we've had to, to date from, uh, you know, the few people we've spoken to is the, an initial reaction saying, but I do things this, this way. Mm. And, you know, they've just got to get out of that lane because if they don't, if you, for my humble opinion, mm. I have a restaurant in the future <laughs> because their cost structure will too, to be, be too high um, and they won't be able to cope. Okay, uh, finally, right, can you give me um, uh, maybe an overview of where you want to take this uh, venture of yours? So now you're in Sydney and you're looking for the next, um, you're oh, looking no. scaling up, but what about plans, the expansion? Are you only in Sydney at the moment? or no, no, We've got restaurants in Melbourne. We've got restaurants uh, up the Central Coast um, and they're quite large restaurants. So okay. we're not just Sydney centric because it's cloud based software, um, which really doesn't matter where, where the person is. Um, and the way we built, built the software, it, it takes time zones into account all time. So, but where, where do you, how do you want to expand this? Like, what's the maybe a, a year from now? How, what do you see? Like, how do you want to move forward? A, a year from now, I think we would have you know, at least 500 restaurants on the platform. Um, and then I think the, the benefit is that that pushback that we said about restaurants being comfortable doing what they're doing because that's what they know, when they see their next door neighbour doing something different and when they see their next door neighbour being successful doing something different, they will change their mind. So basically this app will, will basically make the phone, you know, where we call and book for tables a thing of the past, right? 100 percent and you you and every customer will have comfort that when you make that online booking that you are getting that same personalized experience as if you were calling somebody okay and not have the fact that you go there turn up and that oh i didn't get your reservation that will not be an issue anymore right uh, well 
hope, hopefully it isn't an issue now with the other systems, other than the fact with the other systems they're clumsy and, and they can't optimize. But you, with our system, I mean, even now, um, what it does, you make a booking and it instantaneously gives you a confirmation. Instantaneously, it gives you a link so you can uh, put it on your calendar and you don't forget it and, you know, you invite your friends and do all of those things. And then again, you know, you get a reminder two days before um, your event and if you don't respond to it, you'll get another reminder, you know, the day before. Um, so it's very hard to, to be in a situation where you turn up and they don't have your booking. Okay, great. It's great speaking to you. So, all right, that's all the time that we have today. We have just been speaking to Peter Petrus of Wiz Butler. Thank you, Peter, for joining us today. Thank you for your time. Great to be, to be with you. Awesome. Thank you for listening to another episode of 30 Minutes with DailyStraits.com. If you like this podcast, don't forget to subscribe to it and give us a like in all our social networks. Thank you. Thanks, Jerry.